When I was with the Hadza in Tanzania earlier this year, we went hunting and we were able to successfully hunt a baboon with a tribe. Now, this is part of the Hadza's fundamentally life-giving food. And the next day, the Hadza tribesman who struck the killing blow was the one who got to eat the brain. It is a prized organ among the Hadza given only to the hunter who's actually fundamentally involved in the successful hunt of the animal. Brain is likewise treasured by hunter-gatherer cultures and our ancestors throughout our history. The earliest reports of hominids suggest that one of the key tools that we developed was the ability to use rocks to break open bones to get bone marrow, but also to break open the skull, the cranium of animals to get the brain. And I firmly believe that many of the unique nutrients contained within brain would make this organ so incredibly special. And it played a very important role in our evolution and continues to do so within hunter-gatherer cultures around the world, where, as I said, it is totally deeply cherished. So what are the unique nutrients in brain that make it so special? There are three big ones that I think of here. These are phosphatidylserine, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, and sphingolipids, specifically things like sphingomyelin. In addition to these three nutrients, we know there are lots of omega-3s in the brain, specifically DHA and EPA, in a food matrix form that are highly bioavailable. And the value of omega-3s in the diet is well-established. But what is less well-known is the value of things like phosphatidylserine, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, and sphingolipids in the human diet. I don't know why this is, because there are incredibly well-done and striking studies done uh, with phosphatidylserine in the elderly that show that it prevents cognitive decline and increases stress resilience. And these studies are done with bovine-derived phosphatidylserine. I'll show one here briefly just because it's so striking. The title of the study is Cognitive Decline in the Elderly, a double-blind, placebo-controlled multicenter study on the efficacy of phosphatidylserine administration. If you look at the results, they show that the administration of bovine-derived phosphatidylserine was statistically significant and efficacious in preventing cognitive decline in these elderly patients. And they go on in the paper to sing more praises of bovine cortex-derived phosphatidylserine uh, here, where they say it has been shown to enhance the activities of membrane-bound enzymes involved in neurotransmitter release, signal transduction in the central nervous system. Uh, it stimulates catecholaminergic and uh, neurotransmission and acetylcholine release and synthesis in the central cortex of aged rats. Uh, furthermore, its oral administration in rodents prevented age-induced loss of dendritic spines in the hippocampal pyramidal cells. It's basically protecting the brain in these uh, rodent models when they give bovine-derived phosphatidylserine. Uh, atrophy of cholinergic cells in the basal forebrain was also prevented by this. And they said, as a consequence, treatments with bovine-derived phosphatidylserine increases learning and memory function in aged rodents. And as they show in this study, in elderly adults with potential for cognitive decline, this type of a supplementation was quite effective in preventing that as well. So phosphatidylserine, stress prevention in the brain, uh, potentiates neuronal growth, protects neuronal uh, atrophy, and is involved, at least in rodent models, in improving learning and in double-blind placebo-controlled trials in the elderly in preventing cognitive decline. So that is a very powerful thing in brain. Brain-derived neurotrophic factor is a neurotrophin, a type of compound that is involved in the stimulation of neuronal growth and also the continuation of neurons. Basically, there it is a mitogen, it is a compound that promotes them growing and tells them to keep uh, active and keep making new connections. And last but not least are sphingolipids, which are membrane-bound components that are involved in signal transduction and uh, critical for both the myelin sheath and neuronal cell membrane. But we now know that they are critical for proper neuronal signal transduction and health of a brain. And all of these unique nutrients are found in the brain of a cow, which is what we desiccate and put into our moon memory and brain supplement at heart and soil. So we don't get baboon brains like I did in Tanzania with the Hadza, but we can get bovine brains from New Zealand. And I will note that there has never been a case of bovine spongiform encephalopathy ever documented in New Zealand. And uh, the farms that we source from, all of the farms in New Zealand, really all over New Zealand and Australia, there is a very rigorous surveillance uh, process, surveillance standards that are in place to protect against this. But there has never been a case of mad cow disease, a.k.a. Uh, bovine spongiform encephalopathy in these animals. So this 
brain extract, this desiccated brain that we put in our moon memory brain is incredibly safe and very efficacious. It's very hard for people to eat brain in the United States and other countries. And so this is an incredibly valuable supplement for all of us who would like to get the benefits of things like brain-derived omega-3 fatty acids, DHA and EPA, BDNF, that is brain-derived neurotropic factor, sphingomyelin, sphingolipids in general, and uh, probably most importantly, or at least um, profoundly considered in research, uh, phosphatidylserine. So enjoy this, guys. Let us know what you think. I think you're really going to find benefits with this one.